Good afternoon, good morning, uh, wherever you're located. Uh, my name is Greg Stilson, and with me is my colleague Louis Philippe Massé. Um, mm -hmm. I am uh, I'm the, the product manager for Humanware's blindness products. And uh, Louis Philippe is my boss, so on your questions, please be nice. Um, <laughs> and uh, we're here to talk about a topic that is pretty uh, exciting with uh, with regard to what we're doing at Humanware, and that is math. Um, so uh, f we're really thrilled that uh, we had such an incredible turnout for uh, this this webinar, um, and uh, we really appreciate you taking your time. Uh, this Wednesday afternoon to uh, to spend it with us. So I hope you do find it useful. We're going to take a different approach at this webinar. So typically uh, with a lot of webinars you see a bunch of PowerPoint slides and things like that. Um, I'm under the impression that most of you know what the Braille Note Touch is in general and either you have it or you're curious about what it can do with regards to math. And so this webinar is really going to be focused on uh, a demonstration, demonstration of how to do things related to math, on uh, what what the touch really can do, and uh, honestly how, how it's the only device that can do it as an all-in-one tool. Um, and that's really something that, that is exciting with regard to the Braille Note Touch. So uh, I'll give you a brief summary. So in the background you're seeing the Braille Note Touch support website. I will get to uh, some of that in at the end of the webinar. I want to show where you can get some a lot of support uh, related to how to use the Braille Note Touch, what resources are available. We get a lot of questions because the Touch is, a, you know, it's a it's a very simple product and an extremely efficient product. Um, but it's, uh, for those of you who are teachers of the visually impaired joining us today, um, you know, I I. I worked with many of you um, when I've traveled the, the country and the, uh, actually globally in general. Um, I know how little time you guys have and how much traveling you're doing from school to school and things like that. So I, I totally understand the, uh, the challenge of keeping up with the technology. Um, to give you a little background on myself, uh, I am a, a blind individual. I, I've actually used uh, Braille Notes ever since I, I used probably one of the very first Braille Note classics um, back when I was in school finishing or starting my university classes. And so it's just sort of been a, a, a weird uh, circle of events that I'm now managing the products uh, coming out of humanware related to blindness uh, blindness products. Um, but I, I did struggle through math uh, math content. I went into pre-calc, I think was the highest I went uh, through in my university level courses. I was one of those people that absolutely did not like math, uh, <laughs> as many of your students probably don't, because it is, it's challenging. Uh, math is spatial, math is visual. So what I'm going to show you today is not meant to be a replacement for the Perkins Brailler. Um, I can tell you right now that I use the Perkins Brailler throughout the majority of my math experience uh, in throughout my, my educational career. And the Perkins Brailler is a fantastic tool for learning spatial math. So when you need to do things like showing your work or doing uh, long division problems and things like that, a blind student needs to see that spatial orientation. So this is by no means supposed to replace a Perkins Brailler for that early introduction to spatial math. Um, what this is really used for is when a student is filling out a worksheet. Um, I can tell you that the number of times that I filled out a worksheet on a Perkins Brailler and then had to, ha had to hand that hard copy Braille to my teacher, the visually impaired, who then had to also know Nemeth, or in, in some people's cases UEB math today, and be able to transcribe that content into print to be handed into the decided uh, classroom teacher. There, there's a significant delay and a significant time length that goes uh, from the time that I would have completed my assignment to the time that it would actually get turned in uh, to the to the classroom teacher. And there were more than one occurrence when maybe the, the TVI didn't know what I was trying to write in, in my hard copy Braille and so it got transcribed incorrectly. Or maybe I didn't write perfect Nemeth and they had to kind of guess. So the, the amount of human error that goes on between the, uh, the, when the student does the assignment to when it gets turned into the classroom teacher, there's a lot of risk there. Um, and it, it 
at times doesn't allow for an adequate grading or, or inspection of what the student has learned. And so with the Braille Note Touch, what we're looking to do is really create an independent process for the student to create their math content and turn it into the sighted classroom teacher themselves. And for that to be all translated, I, I love this word, automagically into perfect looking print. So today um, we developed an app called Key Math. And Key Math is an app, it's based off of Keysoft, that came completely free with uh, your Braille Note Touch in version 2.0. Version 2.0 was released in October. And I want to show you first how to actually upgrade your Touch to version 2.0. So if you, let's say, bought a Touch and you didn't have any blind students uh, using it or, um, you know, maybe they didn't get to using it until later in the, the semester, um, you may be running a, a version that's a little earlier than 2.0. And so what I want to do is walk you through first the process of just how easy it is to update your Braille Note to, to version 2.0. So what I'm going to do is I'm visually you're seeing on the uh, on my screen the a visual representation of the Braille Note Touch's screen. So remember that the Braille Note Touch does come with a a visual touch screen. The student has the ability to choose whether they want to type on a regular traditional note taker style keyboard that flips on top of the screen or what I'm going to use is the mechanism called touch braille. What that means is I'm going to lay all 10 fingers on the screen. I'm going to feel a quick vibration and I'm going to type as if there are Braille keys under my fingers. And the cool thing about uh, the Braille Note Touch is that we use this technology called Touch Braille that actually tracks your fingers as they move around the screen. So for example, it recognizes that my left index finger is used for dot one, my left middle finger for dot two, ring finger for dot three, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But the beautiful thing for a classroom environment is that if you if a student gets good enough which you know they practice at touch braille and they feel comfortable with it um, myself to give you an example I, I I actually use a carrying case a leather carrying case on my touch um, that doesn't even have a keyboard I, I like the carrying case because it makes it a little bit thinner without the uh, the added keyboard that I don't need on it anymore and I'm just as fast typing on the glass as I would be typing on a physical keyboard so um, a lot of students may find touch braille to be what they want to use because they don't want to be any different than anybody else they don't want to be the blind kid making loud typing sounds uh, in the classroom they want to be typing as silently as their sighted classmate who writes with the paper and pencil so um, so everything that I'm going to be doing today is done on the touch screen. You'll hear little clicks. I have little audio clicks turned on to tell you when I'm actually touching the screen, but um, I can turn those off and make it completely silent as well. So what I'm going to do is lay all 10 fingers on my screen and I'm going to go from the main menu here. Uh, so you'll hear if I go to the top with space one, two, three. Top. Contacts. So you hear contacts, key list. Normal. And I'm slowing down the speed for you. Pattern. So I'm at the main Space menu. Five. The key, uh, we're going to look for the app called Key Updater, and this is going to walk you through how to update your Braille Note Touch to version 2.0 if you're not there. So what we're going to do is press A, because in uh, Braille Note Touch you can use first letter navigation anywhere in the system. So I'm going to press A. All applications. I hear all applications. I'm going to press Enter. Main menu, all apps. Braille terminal. And you see Braille terminal, that was one thing that was included in version 2.0. Now you can use your Braille Note Touch as a Braille display with other devices, such as a PC, computer with screen readers, uh, an iOS device. Uh, so it's really a device, two device in one kind of situation where you can use it as a uh, Braille tablet like it normally is, or you can use it uh, with other devices. In this case, I want to press the letter K until I find Key Updater. So I'm going to press K, and there's a whole bunch of Ks because we like the word Keysoft and Key Everything. So I'm going to press K. Keep. Key BRF. Key BRF is a Braille BRF reader. Key Calc. Key Calc is your, our traditional calculator. Cane Crypt. That's key a files. test file that we're using. Key files is a file manager. Key list. Key list is your address list. Key mail. Key mail is obviously our email client. Key math. Key math is what we'll get to in a second. Key plan. Key plan is the calendar. Key updater. And there is key updater. So key updater is the app that is used um, when when a and uh, 
Keysoft or a Brownlow Touch app come, uh, update comes out, normally you would see a notification come up that says a system update is available. All you would need to do is press enter on that notification and it would instantly start updating if you're connected to Wi-Fi. In this case, if you have missed that notification and you didn't update your device, um, this is how you do that. So now if I hit enter on Key Updater. Key Updater. System Update. System up to date. So you you may have heard it says system update, system up to date. Okay. Now if I had an update available, you would he hear rather than and see in Braille rather than seeing that the system is up to date, you would see system update and update is available online. If I pressed enter there, the update would immediately start downloading, and it would take it takes about 30 minutes or so uh, to download and install. But from the time that you press enter, it does everything on its own. So it will download the update, it will restart the device, it will install the update, it'll restart again, and then you'll be back up and running with version 2.0. <laughs> so that's as simple as it is to install a Keysoft update. So now if I press the next thumb key. Select second voice. It's the far right. Another voice. It says select second voice. And what that means is that in the Braille Note Touch you can actually have two different voices. And where that's really beneficial is that if you have a student who is or is, uh, who speaks another language or is in maybe a, another language class, you can have multiple language profiles on there. So I can press enter with L. Secondary language profile. And it's going to secondary language profile, and my secondary language profile is Spanish. And in Braille, I have the Spanish Braille code and a Spanish voice that's right there. Enter with L one more time. Primary language profile. And now I'm back in English primary language profile. So that's just one example of of how you would uh, you'd switch, um, especially if you have a student who's taking uh, a, a separate foreign language class or something like that. So let's get into the good stuff. Um, so what I'm going to do is jump back to the main menu by pressing space with all six dots or the home button, by, which is on the front of the device. It's a little uh, little circle button. I'm going to hit that now. Main menu. Main menu. Contacts. And I'm at the contacts, which is the top uh, top item. So now, what I want to do is go through a typical um, a typical math assignment or a typical math situation. So student, let's say student gets a math worksheet in the hard copy braille, um, which I do emphasize that we, when a student gets a, a math worksheet or a math assignment, it is, it's absolutely necessary that they see the spatial orientation of the question being asked to them. And so oftentimes a hard copy piece of paper is, is the best solution for the worksheet. But if they need to fill out answers, um, that's where this device can really come in handy. So what we're going to do is create a math document. To do that, I'm going to go to the word processor, just like we would if I was in, you know, English, language arts, or history, or whatever. If I needed to do a book report, I would still use word processor. So I'm going to press W. Word processor, keyword. It says word processor, keyword. I'm going to press enter. Keyword menu. Create. And now I'm at the keyword menu, and the first item is create. At this stage, I can just press enter. Loading. Please wait three period. Edit box. End of document. So now I am immediately in a keyword document. At this stage, I am ready to go. I am in a keyword document, set to go. And this is a Microsoft Word DOCX file. So for those of you who had used Braille Notes in the past or other note takers, this in the past you would be using a document that is proprietary to uh, the Braille note taker that you'd be using. Um, so you would always have that second step of converting that file into, you know, a file that's readable by everybody else. So whether that be a text file or a Microsoft Word file or something, you'd have to do that second step of doing the conversion. With the Braille note touch, there is no second step. This is a document that is a Microsoft Word file, a DOCX file, and I'm writing in it in perfect contracted Braille, and it feels like it's a Braille file to me. So the benefit here is that it feels totally natural for the student or the blind user um, who's writing in Braille, but for the sighted teacher or TVI or whatever, um, you're able to see exactly what's, what's going on at the same time. So what I'm doing now, I'm just going to write in most uh, math assignments, I would need to first write my name, so I'll write my name now. Greg. I'm writing in contracted Braille. And you should see that because you actually see Braille dots on the screen. I'll use that term again. They will now automatically turn into print. 
Stilson. And you see that it just happens uh, in real time there. Um, so there's my name. We're going to be in algebra. L deleted. Algebra. Three. Three. End of document. And this will be uh, exam. Exam. Unit one. Unit one. Okay. End of document. So End now document. I've created a couple new lines, and I am now ready to let's say start answering some math questions. Okay. So in in programs like Microsoft Word and, and other word processors, there are math add-ons that allow you to use what they call an equation editor. And that's really what key math is, is an equation editor. So key math allows you to use the word processor as you normally would. So we're using all the exact same steps that you've already taught your student how to do with their book reports and their history exams and their history you know, worksheets that they have to do and stuff like that. So we're not doing any different steps to create a document. Okay, where we have different steps now is when we want to create math content. And to do that, the command is backspace in the letter M for math. Okay, now if you forget that, remember that the Braille Note Touch has a context menu. So I'm going to do that now by pressing the little square button on the front of the device. If I press that now, context menu. File functions. So you have file functions. That's things like save, save as, preview, stuff like that. I'm going to go to editing functions. Editing functions. And I'm going to press enter there. Editing functions. Spell check space with dots one, six. And you see that you have things like spell check. And then right afterwards, it says space with dots one, six. So the beauty of the context menu is very similar to the old style of contextual help back in the old Braille notes is that you have the ability to get the command, but then also the shortcut that's associated with it so that you and your student don't have to go through this menu structure anymore. So if I press next again, find. there's find. With that. find previous. Find next. Insert math backspace with M. So insert math backspace with M right there. I'm not going to do it. I, I could press enter. Actually, I will do it right now. So let's say I was right in my assignment. I'm going to press backspace with M. Please wait three period. Edit box. Now I have been brought into our key math equation editor. And what this is, is this is an application that allows me to write in perfect Nemeth or UEB math. Right now I have it set to Nemeth. I think you might have seen or heard it say Nemeth right there. Um, you can change it to UEB in the settings if you need to. But I am now able to write in perfect Nemeth math. And in real time, you will see that the perfect print output will be displayed on the screen and I can then take that content and bring that back into my actual math document that I uh, that I just had opened up in keyword okay now before I start typing math content I know we've taken about 20 minutes here I want to I, I always tell people you don't want to listen to me talk for 60 straight minutes so what I like to do is do bits and pieces first and then we'll open it up to any questions so if I can turn it back over to, to LP LP do we have any uh, any questions at all uh, we have a few uh, I would say general uh, topic uh, questions that might uh, be better uh, answered at the end I guess okay Perfect. Well, I'll make sure to leave some time for, for more general questions. But if you do have any anything related to the flow that I've been doing or the update process, um, feel free to type them in. LP, if you want to interrupt me um, as I'm going through some of this, uh, feel free. We can we can tackle some a, of those. There is actually a good question on the update uh, process, if I may. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say uh, the question is, let's say you don't have an internet connection. Can you download the update from the website also, can you downgrade to a previous version such as 1.01? .01? So the answer for downgrading is no. Um, we, as we upgrade our devices, we recertify um, the device with Google. So because this is a Google certified device and you have access to the Google Play Store, every version that we, uh, that we install is recertified. With, uh, with Google. So as soon as a version or a device has been upgraded to version 2.0, their device is now certified as a version 2.0 device. and We can't go back any further beyond that. To answer your question about, um, about uh, 
downloading the files uh, and, and using them offline. We do have a distributor mechanism that uh, allows a distributor to upgrade multiple devices at one time. If you did buy your device from a dealer, uh, you know, a distributor in your state or, or area, you can contact them. Otherwise, um, if, if your specific school doesn't allow you to download files like that or, or things, whatever, you can contact our technical support team and they can provide you a link to, uh, to a zip file. Yes, you do, you do have the capacity to download a zip file to an SD card or a thumb drive and pop that file or pop that card into, uh, into the Braille Note Touch. After you pop the card into the Braille Note Touch, you do the exact same process that I just showed you. You go to Key Updater, it'll say, uh, rather than an update is available online, it'll say an update is available on external media. And if you press enter, it installs it. Any other questions, LP? Uh, not for the not for the moment. There will be, as I said, some uh, general questions at the end. Awesome. Okay. So let's start writing some math. Um, so traditionally, uh, or, or in in this case, what we will do now is we are in the equation editor. So as I said, this is a separate application. This is not keyword. Remember, we're not writing directly in our document. We're writing in a separate application that we triggered just by pressing one key command. And it immediately opened it up and it's ready to go. So now what I'm going to do is just start typing an equation. Okay. So in the past, you would have had to, with, with other note taker solutions or even the old Braille note apex, the old Braille note apex, when you would uh, write some math, it would come out in some kind of difficult to read abbreviation. So for example, one half would look like open frac one over two close frac. Um, and for other solutions, you would have to bring it into Microsoft Word and activate the equation editor. What I want to show you today is that what you're going to do with key math is all you will need to do. The device will be the only tool you need to use. And at that stage, Keyword will generate a Microsoft Word or a PDF file that you can immediately send to that classroom teacher. And I'll show you just how easy that is. So right now, what we're going to do is write my uh, write an equation. So we're going to write number sign 1. That's 4, 5, 6 for the punctuation uh, symbol. And then I'm going to write a period. So I wrote one and now you're seeing braille being written on the screen and that's because right now this is all nemeth braille but as you'll see as soon as i press the enter key that's going to get converted directly to perfect looking print math so i'm going to write in nemeth braille open fraction indicator one over two closing fraction indicator x plus three y equals 32 or 37 and now you'll see as soon as i press enter LP, can you verify that you see perfect looking print math on the screen? It is perfect looking math on your screen. <laughs> <laughs> That's LP with the sighted vision there. <laughs> so at that stage, I've written in one line of text with no extra steps. I didn't have to know any other commands or keystrokes. I just wrote Nemeth as I typically would write it on a Perkins Brailler and press enter. The Braille Note Touch does the rest. So now uh, I'll write. So that's the answer to question number one. We'll write number two, and let's let's just do a simple one. So we'll say twenty is greater than fifteen. Okay. If I press enter, you should see in print that twenty is greater than fifteen. LP, I'm assuming you see that. Correct. Okay. So now. To verify that I wrote it correctly, you, you didn't hear the speech speaking, and that's because with Nemeth, remember that everything is sort of contextual. It doesn't know what to convert it to until you've completed your expression or equation. But now if I go back to the previous line with space and dot one, which is the same command as you're all used to going line by line, so space dot one. Two. Twenty greater than fifteen. And if I go space and dot one again. One. Open frac 1 over 2 close frac x plus 3y equals 37. So I'm able to completely verify that I wrote everything and it was translated correctly. Because if it wasn't translated correctly, the speech would not speak it as correct. So I always tell people when you're using key math or, or writing Nemeth, if you don't trust your Nemeth code and you don't, maybe you're, you're a little new at Nemeth or whatever else, you know, it, it's important to. Uh, to make sure that the things that you're writing are being translated correctly. So at any point, you can go up and check the previous line that you wrote. And if I want to change 37 to be, let me delete that. 
Let's say it's 12. I just fix that. Now I'll read that line with space 1, 4, or I could press space in that 1, but space 1, 4 reads the current line. 1. Open frac. 1 over 2. Close frac. X plus 3. Y equals 12. Okay, and now if I move to the next line, LP, two. can you verify that that is now changed from 37 to 12? LP, are you there? Sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on the first line? Yes. Uh, well, uh, I think you need to do the, the, the refresh because we see still see the... I, you're right. I, didn't, I did not press enter. That's my fault. So now it should say 12. Now it's, uh, it's showing 12. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yep. Just remember that whenever you you make a modification, you do need to re-press -pre enter to, to activate that line to say that line is done uh, to have it retranslated on the screen. So now, um, and I can do things even further than that, I can do some geometric shapes. Um, so you see that I've written questions, you know, uh, one and two. Uh, you can write up to 10 lines at a time. Remember, this is an equation editor. It's not a, uh, a full document. So the Braille Note Touch will tell you if you've exceeded the amount of things that you can move over to your, your, your document. Um, but uh, in most cases, when you're, you're writing an assignment, you, you typically would write question one and then move it back over. Question two, move it back over. So I'm going to do three of them. So I'm going to write number three. And in this case, let's write some geometry symbols. So I'm going to write uh, the triangle symbol, dollar sign T, which is what it looks like a dollar sign T, at least uh, with Nemeth. And then I'll do open parenthesis with the sides. So a triangle of 4, 7, 9, closing parentheses. I'm going to press Enter. And now we should see. Triangle, 4, 7, 9. Okay. And we'll do one more, a little bit more advanced. So uh, let's do, uh, let's see, number four. We'll do some mixed numbers. So I'll go one, and then the mixed number indicator, one and two thirds. Close mixed number indicator, x plus two. 20, so let's say, we'll add in another fraction, plus 1 over 8 equals uh, 2 and 7 eighths. Dots 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 deleted. So I've now written, just to make sure that I wrote that right, I missed the 1, but uh, just correcting my my mistake there. So now if I go to the end of the document, we'll, we'll read this line just to make sure I have it right. Space with C to read the current line. 4. 1. Open frac. 2. Over. 3. Close frac. X plus. Open frac. 1. Over. 8. Close frac. Equals 2. Open frac. 7. Over. 8. Close frac. Okay. And if I press enter, you should see space all those mixed numbers. LP, can you confirm you see them? Uh, yeah, looks all right. Okay, good. So now, I've written a bunch of math, and it's available in print. We're, we're doing okay. So now what I'm going to do is I need to export that math back to Keyword. And what this is going to do is it actually takes the print version of the math, uh, and it exports it to the clipboard, where I can paste it in my word processor. So I'm going to press backspace and E to export all this math that I just wrote, backspace and E. Export it to clipboard. Edit box. And now you Edit see document. that it brings me right back to my keyword document, my, my math assignment that I was just writing a, a little bit ago. And it put me back in the exact space that I left off. And it's ready now to have all that content pasted. So I'm going to press backspace and V, which is the paste command, just like in, in Windows, it's control V. Pasting in progress. Please wait three period. Okay. Pasted. It's pasted. End of and, End of document. and now what you see on the screen is a whole bunch of Braille. Because what we did for the for the blind user is we actually pasted the image 
of all that math. But you don't see that yet. What you see for the blind user, because this is a product built for a blind user, is the Braille content that I wrote right in my document. And what's really cool about that is that I can actually edit all of this content. I can, I can let's say I'm reading this and let's say I want to change number one rather than saying one half x plus three y let's say I, I, I look back and I say oh shoot I screwed up I need to change that to one over three what's really cool about this is I can touch my cursor on the one half in my document here Image start. and I'll press backspace and M and you'll notice that all of the math content that I had just written is back in key math. It's already populated back in with key math, so now I can change that one half to be one third. And I can now create a new line. And now, LP, you should see that that is now one third x rather than, uh, than one half. Is that correct? It is. Okay. Okay, good. And now what I'm going to do is re-export this content back to the clipboard. So I'm going to press backspace and E. Uh, just making sure that I, I think I bumped a key that I want to make sure I don't have an extra character. There we go. So backspace and E now. Please wait three periods. It's now back to, it's exported back to the, uh, to the clipboard. I just need to go back and delete the previous content that I had, so I'm just going to backspace. I just went to the end of the file. I'm going to backspace over it. You see that all of my math now has been erased, and I am ready to now repaste, so backspace and V. End of document. Greg, there is a question that is appropriate at this point. Uh, yeah, how, do you interchange, how do you interchange uh, text and numbers as, a, as in a word problem, for example? A word, That's a great that is a great question. So you can do it one of two ways. You can do it all in the key math application. So I could just write letters, but remember that since you're writing in Nemeth code, you cannot write in contracted Braille in Nemeth code at the same time. So what I would recommend you do is if you have a line, let's say I want to write this content, but then question number two is, uh, you know, based on number, sorry, question number, whatever I'm on here, uh, uh, question number five, I guess I would be. Um, you can create the actual uh, words in the, because remember, now I'm back in a Microsoft Word file, so now I'm back writing in contracted Braille grade two, so I can type in number five, five. and I can say, uh, you know, seven, seven. apples. Apples. or something like that. So remember that when you're actually in the Microsoft Word, the keyboard, the, sorry, the keyword um, word processor and not the key math, I'm writing in contracted Braille. So I can interchange questions that have uh, words involved versus questions that have uh, math involved. But if I want to go back into key math, which I'll do now, so let's go to a new line. So backspace and M again. I'm back to create some math. I can type in, so I can type in uh, road A intersects with road B. So I can actually combine that with Nemeth at uh, Nemeth uh, 37 miles or something. I have no idea. But my point is is that I wrote words, if I press enter, LP, you should see that it says road A plus or intersects with road B at 37 miles. Is that correct? It's correct, but you didn't put any space between the words, so uh, it's a very long word. Oh, it's all, it's all jumbled. It's <laughs> my fault. But having said all this, um, the answer is yes, you can interchange. Whether you want to do that with um, with keyword doing all of the inter, you know, uh, the the intersect, which is the way that I would really recommend you do it. If you if you have if you have a question that requires a lot of, um, you know, standard literary characters, just write it in keyword, and any math content that requires any equations or things like that, then uh, then write it in key math. Quick question, Greg. Um, what if you uh, forgot, for example? Uh, uh, 
the symbol for in, in an equation. How to you, how can you uh, remember how to use some of the method? That, that is a great question, LP. Um, not so from, not from me. <laughs> <laughs> so what you can do is there we we've included a a function within KeyMath called the symbol selector, and the symbol selector is fantastic because it works in both Nemeth or UEB. So for those of you who are using UEB math and are learning it, uh, you are able to use the symbol selector as well in UEB. So to do that, what I do is a command which is backspace and IN, but remember that in all of the Keysoft apps we have the context menu available, so just simply tapping the little square button on the front of the device. Context menu. Find. Find next. Find pre preview. Export pre save a copy. Insert symbol. So backspace with dots three five. So backspace with dots three five. Backspace the IN symbol. Symbols list. Nameth symbols table list. So now we are in the Nemeth symbol selector. So what I'm going to do is write the fraction one half x plus three equals seven or something like that. But I'm going to do that without ever knowing how to write the fraction one over two. So the first thing we're going to do is see if we can find the fractions category. So I'm going to press F because everything works with first letter navigation. Fractions. I'm going to press enter on fractions. Open fraction indicator. What's really cool about this is I see open fraction indicator written in words, but then on the right side of the Braille display, I see dots one, four, five, six to show me exactly how to write that. What's even cooler is I'm just going to activate this with the cursor router key, Blank. and it inserts the open fraction indicator directly in my math content. So open fraction indicator one. All right, now I forgot how to actually insert the over or the 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 fraction uh, line. I'm going to do go back into the symbol selector, symbol selector with backspace and dots in or, or dots three five. Symbol name F symbols table list. And I'm going to press F again for fractions. Fractions. And press enter. Open fraction indicator. And I'm going to go to the next item. Close fraction indicator. Now you, you see that it says close fraction indicator. Well, I'm, I know that I'm going to need that one later on, so I see that it's written like a number sign. That's three, four, five, six. Um, Open mixed number indicator. There's the mixed number indicator. Close mixed number fraction line. And it says fraction line, and I see dots three four right there. So I'm going to input that by activating it with a router key. Blank. Or pressing Red enter. Box. So now I have one over two, and then just if I accidentally forgot how to do the close fraction uh, indicator, we do backspace in or backspace like three five. I'm going to press F for fraction. Fractions. Enter. Open fraction, close fraction indicator. There's the close fraction indicator. It shows me how to write it, and I'm going to press enter or a cursor router key. Blank. Now, I will press X. I forgot how to write the plus symbol, so I'm going to go open space, backspace IN or backspace 35. And. Numbers. Comparison symbols. Greek symbol. I think we need comparison. It's not there. Which one is it? I think it's operators. Let's press enter. Identity. Plus or minus. Minus sign. Plus sign. There it is, plus sign. So plus sign, I see that's uh, three, four, six. So I'll activate that. Blank. And we'll say uh, 3y equals 7. So if I read that back, if I press enter, and I read that back, I'll go back up to the previous line with space dot 1. Open frac 1 over 2 close frac plus 3y equals 7. I must have forgot my x, so I'll put my x back. And I'll put enter there. So now we see one half x plus three y equals seven. So the very cool part of this is that with essentially without knowing any Nemeth code, I wrote one half x plus three y equals seven. I, I did know the equals one, so I cheated there. But <laughs> at this stage, that that is a super powerful tool for a student who is learning the Nemeth code. Um, they can get validation that what they're doing is uh, is correct. They can look at the different Nemeth 
categories that are there. And uh, you know, if let's say you you did a fractions chapter, you know, two months ago, and you haven't done a lot with fractions since, but you need to go back to doing them again. It's a way to refresh yourself. So it's not only a tool to convert math braille into print, but it's actually a way to serve as a um, a support tool when learning the math code as well. So now we're done. I'm going to now uh, export this content back to Keyword. So I'm going to press backspace and E. Exported to clipboard. Exported to clipboard. And, books. and I document. am now ready to paste what I just wrote. So backspace and V. End of document. It's now Paste pasted. It. And now I pasted 1 half x plus 3y equals 7. Now what you're still seeing is all of the math braille that the blind student had written. And now here's where the magic comes in, is that, remember, this is a Microsoft Word file. It's a, it's a DOCX file that could immediately be sent in to a teacher. Okay, With one keystroke, I'm going to convert this file to a PDF or create a visual preview. Okay, so I'm going to press enter with the letter V, which is the command for a visual preview. So if the, if the sighted teacher wants to see exactly what I've been doing, I'm going to press enter with V right now. Generating preview. Please wait three periods. Android, because it has multiple apps that can uh, create a preview. Uh, on your device, if you bought it fresh, the only app you would have is Drive PDF Viewer. I'm going to just use that one because that's the easiest one. So I'm just going to quickly press enter. And now it's actually Drive. rendering Page one of one the preview. One. And at this stage, you should see in print, and LP, please verify that, that you see all of my math work that I just did, but you're seeing it in, in perfect print. It's in perfect print. It shows correctly, but you're still not good in math. I, <laughs> I that, whether you uh, you you are able to create perfect looking print math doesn't always mean you're you're good in math. I am a perfect example of that. So, what we did here is actually created the PDF version of this uh, this math content. Now, what's I haven't even saved this file yet. This file is not even saved as a Microsoft DocX file. But if I want to instantaneously send this file to my classroom teacher, remember this is a PDF that's been generated right now. So if I want to instantaneously send this file, there's a quick way to do that. If I navigate over to the option that says more options. Greg Stilson, Algebra 3, navigate up rendering dot find. Add to drive. More options. All I'm doing is just pressing the far right thumb key, which is the next thumb key. I'm going to activate more options. Showing five items. The first item send file. says send file. If I activate this item, Android system. Remember, it always asks us what app we want to use to send. So remember, you can have multiple email apps. In this case, if you have an email account assigned on the Braille Note Touch already, which I do, you want to use Keymail. So I'm going to press K. Not checked. Keymail. It says Keymail. If I press Enter, it now highlights and it. Keymail. Computer and it mail. already has created an email with the file immediately attached. So if I want to send this to my favorite recipient, bob.testing at humanware.com. Bob.testing at humanware.com. And I'll press enter. Our subject is already filled in with this strange sort of rendering save document PDF file. I'm going to change the subject line to just be uh, math test file. And I'll press enter again. Here is my math homework. If I was sending to a real email address at this stage, I could press backspace and S. It would immediately send my email with my PDF file attached for my sighted teacher. And just within that short amount of time, I have created a math assignment. I filled out my math worksheet. I converted it to a PDF, and I emailed it to my teacher. Okay. Now, if you, if you want to do it a little bit more without, um, I'm going to exit out of this. Alert on save changes. Do you want to discard them? Discard I'm going to discard my email. Discarded. So Try I'm back it. at my PDF that you saw before. I'm just going to exit there. So space with E to exit. So that's just a really quick way to show you how if, if a student wanted to just email their assignment immediately 
once they were finished, um, that's probably the fastest way to immediately email a, uh, an assignment to a teacher. But I'm going to do a space with E, exit. Edit box. And now let's say that I'm done with my assignment. I want to make sure that I save this file as a Microsoft Word file. So to save it, I'm going to press space with S to save. If I don't remember that, remember you can access the context menu. I'm going to do that by pressing the square button. Context file functions. Activate file functions. File functions. And save is the first item. Save. Space with S. You see space with S. So that's just in case you forgot how to do that. You can always check your, your context menu. So I'll activate that. Enter file name edit box. New document. So we'll call this math. Uh, math. Uh, homework. Homework. And we can see where it's saved by okay. press. Slash storage slash emulated slash zero slash documents. And we see that it's being saved in my documents folder. The last item says slash documents. If you didn't want it there, you could location find button. the button that says location and you could choose English or whatever and save it in whatever folder you want. At this point, I'm just going to go straight to the save button by pressing S. Save button. And enter. And my document is immediately saved as a Microsoft Word .docx file. And I can uh, show you that right now. So I'll do a space with E to exit. And then we'll just make sure that it's been saved there. So I'll go back and open. So press O for open a document. And there's math homework that I just saved. There it is. And math homework is immediately right there. You just see the document, uh, and if we want to see the visual preview, remember, enter with V, Android system. enter to activate drive. drive, and there you go. Now you have that perfect looking print assignment ready to go as the, the PDF. So um, at this point, I think that probably is enough content to show you how to, basically what we've gone through is how to create a document and keyword how to switch over and input some math content so that it's immediately translated to perfect looking print. We talked about how to export that back so that it goes onto the clipboard so you can paste it back in your math assignment and keyword and how to actually render that content in, uh, in a PDF so that a sighted teacher can see it immediately on the screen. We also then talked about how to immediately send that in an email if you wanted to do that. So. Um, Let's answer a few questions. I do want to save the last maybe five minutes or so to show you some support resources because I know there was a lot of content that I crammed into 45 minutes and I can imagine all of you TVIs like frantically writing down every step that I'm doing and so I want to want to uh, put your minds at ease. We do have some math guides that I'll show you how to find um, so that you can follow along step by step on what we just did as well. So LP, if we can go through a few of the questions. Yeah, and before that, uh, also uh, let uh, people know that we will have a recording of that webinar that will be available, and we'll send the uh, the link to that into in the uh, in a follow up email that we'll send in before the end of the week. So. Uh, yeah, definitely. So if you have some colleagues or or TVIs that maybe you know that. Um, didn't get a chance to, to be here, you can definitely send them or forward them the link. We'll also probably do a follow-up e-blast to our entire contacts list just so that people have this uh, this webinar because I, I, I do feel like this is one of the features of the Braille Note Touch that there's really nothing out there that can do what this just did in such a quick manner. There's, there's a bunch of different tools that you can put together to piece together this type of uh, solution, but this is really, the Braille Note Touch is the really the only device that can do an all-in-one um, immediate translation from Math Braille to print with, uh, with, with the symbol selector and all the other pieces combined. Before going into the, the specific questions, and we have a lot, so I'm sorry uh, right away that we won't be able to answer all of them, unfortunately, but we, I'll do a uh, I'll do my best to summarize uh, the questions uh, to Greg. Uh, one of uh, the questions that arised by, uh, it was asked by a few of you guys, uh, is that especially outside uh, outside North America and even in Canada, there's uh, U uh, UED is getting more and more popular over Nimit Matt. So Greg, uh, what's your word on that? My word is that everything that I just did in, uh, in Key Math uh, I can show you quickly how to do it. I'll go back to the main menu. 
what I'm going to do is clear all of the apps that I had there. So just wipe out everything. So I did that by holding the square button and then hit the clear all apps. So everything that I had in background, I just want to show you how you do this from scratch. So if I was using UEB, I would go to all applications, all applications. and press enter. Main menu, all apps. Let's go down to key math. So I'll press K. Key. Key, 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 far, key, list, key, mail, key math. So here's key math. key math. Remember, key math is an app all on its own, but integrated with keyword, which is what I was doing uh, with the backspace letter M, instantly opens it up and it gets it ready. To, so to configure it, you need to go into key math, the, the app itself. You see, you've got create, open, open settings. and here's settings. And settings is there's not many items for settings. Preferred real code. Preferred Braille, Preferred Braille code, code. right Braille. now is set to Nemeth, but if I activate that, Preferred Braille code. Oop. UEB. So I could activate this, Preferred and Braille now code. all the things that I just did in key math, uh, I would be able to do in the UEB math code and not just the Nemeth code. I don't particularly know UEB as, as well as I know Nemeth, so I'm switching mine back to Nemeth. But that's how you change it to UEB. So if you do have a student using UEB math, um, you can definitely do all of the math translation that I just showed you. Um, and actually, the, the questions that you asked related to um, you know, combining uh, words and numbers and things like that, in a, in a UEB situation, that does happen a lot more frequently because you are writing really in one code that combines literary and math. So that's how you change that. All right. Um, there's a, another question uh, that was uh, asked by a multiple person. Uh, how well does the, the Braille Touch uh, do uh, with PDF files from a teacher and converting it to Nemeth? That's a, that's a great question. So the first step, and, and right now there's really nothing out there that allows for good math OCR. Um, that's sort of a, something that we're looking into. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we got the first uh, content right. So being able to, um, to take a a PDF or a, a, a document that's created on the Braille Note Touch and converting all that math Braille into perfect looking print. What you could do um, is you could take a math assignment. If you wanted to get uh, a, you know, a, a worksheet, for example, in Braille without using a hard copy Braille, let's say you just have uh, a bunch of questions that the student needs to answer, you can convert that. Uh, you'd have to bring it into like Duxbury and have that content converted into a BRF, but that BRF file could be opened on the Braille Note Touch in, uh, in Key BRF, which is our BRF reader. Um, so they would be able to read and input that content in, in, uh, in Key BRF. Okay. Um, there's a more general question. Uh, there's also a, other, a lot of questions on that itself, but. The, just uh, to give you a break, <laughs> how, how well does uh, the, uh, the, the typing on the glass adapt to different positions, different finger positions that are unique to different users? It's a great question. So remember that with the Braille Note Touch, um, you, what we try to do is emulate the way that a blind person types on a Perkins keyboard. And the way a blind person always types on a Perkins keyboard, and you do the same thing with a, a regular QWERTY keyboard as well, is that you lay your fingers, your 10 fingers, on the keyboard for a split second just to orient yourself. Everybody does it before you start typing. And that's the exact same process that we do with the Braille Note Touch. You lay all 10 fingers on the screen, and you'll get a quick vibration. That quick vibration tells you that the Braille Note Touch has recognized your hand. It's recognized your hand position, but it's also recognized your fingers individually. And that's really what we want to focus on is it's not about your hands. It's about each individual finger. So we have students who are five years old who've, who, who've used Touch Braille, and we have people with giant hands that <laughs> I've seen. I don't particularly have big hands, but I've seen some people with very large hands typing on the glass. So it's really not hand size dependent. It's more, um, I will say the one thing that we observed is that for students who are very young, um, like I said, we had some students who were five years old typing on this. The one thing we did observe is that when they're very young, they don't quite have the finger control to the individual muscle control to type yet on the touch screen without the guidance of physical keyboard. 
or without the guidance of a physical keyboard. And so um, we did see that with students who were very young, you know, four or five years old, um, they did struggle a little bit more typing on the glass. But as they got older and you started seeing students seven, eight years old, um, you saw a, 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 a very significant improvement. But that's really why we have the device with the physical keyboard. Every Braille Note Touch comes with a keyboard embedded in the case that you can flip onto the screen. And uh, it, it really allows this tool to be used by anybody. OK. Um, there's um, a good question also. How about uh, math textbooks uh, from Bookshare? Uh, are they uh, rendered on the Braille Note Touch? So it's a, it's a good question. Um, the, if you if you get the content from the math textbook, so if the content's provided to you in BRF format, um, then yes, the the Nemeth whatever math code that it was rendered in in the first place. So if it was rendered in uh, Nemeth or UEB or whatever, then that is direct Braille. You'd be able to open that up in the Key BRF app. The problem is that if it's provided as say a text file that math content is is not immediately translated. And that's something that, you know, as I said, phase one is we're trying to do something that's really never been done here. So phase one was, uh, you know, students creating math content to turning it into the, the cited teacher. Um, phase two will be cited teacher providing math content to the, uh, the, the, the blind student. That is, uh, from a development perspective, much, much more difficult because a lot of this content comes from a, a PDF, and that's where uh, not a whole lot of OCR solutions or conversion solutions are available yet. Okay, um, there's a yeah. Well, thanks, guys. There's so many good questions. There is. Um, <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> really... I told you, math is a very popular topic because it's it's uh, it's one of the hardest things I would say for uh, for math uh, for for students with visual impairments and and TVIs to to find solutions that really work consistently. So I, I am glad to see all the interest in the questions. Yeah, there is there is uh, so many great questions there. I'll, I'm struggling to, to, to pick the, 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 the best ones. Um, how can you open and answer uh, an answer uh, document and toggle between the BRF file and the, doc, the docx answer document? Can you do this? You absolutely can. So what I'll do now. I'll unlock, so just to show you, so I'll, let's imagine that I, so let, I'm going to go, All application. I'll open my key BRF file, so key, key here's key BRF. key BRF, let's imagine that I, create. I'm going to create one here, Loading. so here's my key BRF files, imagine that this is full of math worksheet, math content, blah, blah, blah. The beauty of the Braille Note Touch is that it's 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 Keysoft. It, it feels just like a Braille Note, but underneath it's running Android, and you don't really ever see it. But the benefit there is that we can do a ton of different things. Multitasking is one of those. So what I'm going to do is now go back to my word processor. We will. This is a great example. Um, so you see that it says a keyword recovery file exists. Do you want to open it? This is one of the most powerful things of a keyword is that keyword is always saving in the background. So even if your student were to pull the battery out of the device, it recognizes that it didn't close properly. So remember, if you remember at the end when somebody asked me to change key math into UEB, um, I wiped out all of my apps uh, just to clear them out. Uh, so I didn't close keyword properly. I didn't save my assignment and close it. In this case, it recognizes that I didn't close it. So it's saying keyword didn't close properly. Uh, do you want to open the recovery file or discard it? In this case, let's open that. So I'll press O. Open button. Enter. Loading. Please and you see that I'm right back in my document that I had created before. Um, so now let's say that this is my answer document. So to toggle between my answer and my question, so we go back to that BRF file, you go to uh, what most of you are probably familiar with iOS is the app switcher. So we press, uh, you, if you, the command is uh, space 235. Three. We'll go to key BRF, key BRF. Key BRF. and press enter. Black. Now this is our imaginary worksheet document that would be in BRF format. We press space with 235 again. Key There's keyword, and I press enter, and now I'm right back in my document. So you see how we're toggling between 
the BRF assignment and the uh, the worksheet answer on the DOCX. Okay, great. An easy one. Uh, Greg, I know you know this uh, right away. Those are my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> does, uh, does this, this whole process of, you know, uh, saving uh, documents with Matt, does this work well with Google Docs? It's a great question. Um, the answer is yes. You cannot write the math in a Google Doc directly, but what I can do is is this. I will, let's, uh, Let's exit out of this. I'm not going to save my document because I already saved it, so I'm pressing no. So let's go, I'll show you a real simple way. So I'm going to go back to main menu. We'll go to file manager. I'm going to activate that. We'll go to my math homework. So I'll do a space with M or I'll tap that little square button on the front to open the context menu. Context menu. We want to now take that assignment, that DOCX math assignment that we just created, and we want to, let's say, now we want to put this up in the cloud so that the, TV, the, the, the classroom teacher can look at my Google Classroom or Google Docs uh, folder and grade my homework. So what you can do is save this Google Doc or save this Microsoft uh, DOCX file in your Google Drive. So what I'm going to do is open share. the share file or the share option so I'm going to activate that Android system. Not checked. and we're going to say share to drive so I'm going to press S checked. Save to drive. so save to drive if I activate that save to drive alert save to drive document title math homework so it's already mathhomework.doc. So now we're going to go to my as soon as I hit save. Alert preparing key files. Math homework. It's now been uploaded to the cloud, instantaneously uploaded to my Google Drive, where my sighted teacher could immediately start grading it if they wanted to. So the answer is no, you can't write math in a Google Doc specifically, but you can upload the files that you do on, on Keyword and Key Math. You can upload that DOCX file immediately to Google Drive where it can be viewed by anybody. Okay, we are, uh, it's actually uh, uh, two minutes past four Eastern time, so we are getting a little overboard. Uh, let's have uh, one last question. Uh, I, I'm sorry because we have a lot of other very good questions. Uh, don't see this. Don't see my uh, my uh, my sorting of question as a value of your <laughs> of your of your question. Uh, so we'll go from a uh, one last one, and I guess after that, uh, Greg could have his closing remarks. Um, do any school have lending programs for the touch? So. We, we get this a lot. Um, the answer is, is yes. It, it, it all depends on the state that you're in. Um, for example, I know that there may be, a, I think California School for the Blind possibly lends out some of theirs or, uh, you know, different, different locations like that. Um, what I would suggest, though, is if you would like to try out a touch with your student. We do have a distributor network throughout the entire U.S. and uh, in Canada. You can contact us directly. Um, the, the reality is that every distributor does things differently, but I know that there's a lot of distributors and dealers out there that offer um, you know demo trials of a Braille Note Touch or there's there's some that even rent them. So if you don't want to buy them, they, they provide daily rental options and things like that. Um, so I would suggest you really contact your your distributor nearby. We, we at HumanWare always want to support our distributors. They are fantastic support tools for you. Um, so if, uh, if, if you do have any questions or, or things like that, you can definitely contact your local HumanWare distributor if you have one in the area. But I, I do want to emphasize, don't ever hesitate to contact us if you have any questions um, we want to ensure this product works for you and, and your student. I, I 
I personally believe that this is a, a really, really powerful tool in the math classroom, but I'm a little biased. I helped develop the product, so <laughs> I, can't, I can't be, uh, you know, completely unbiased. But uh, the, the only way that, you know, we're, we're doing something that's really never been done. And so I'm always excited to hear stories about how uh, TVIs and students are, are using these in the classroom and the only way that you can get those stories is by actually using the device. So I do encourage you contact uh, your distributor in your area, your humanware distributor, or contact our customer service or sales rep nearby and they can definitely help you out as well. So um, we, we definitely want you and your student to get this in, in your students' hands. Um, it's really a device unlike one that's ever been there. Uh, in the past, you know, with, with traditional assistive technology devices, um, you know, they, they were typically on closed platforms. And the idea of accessing Google Docs or Dropbox or, uh, you know, any apps on the, on the Play Store like we can do today was really out of the question. So this device being a fully accessible and efficient device that has the open capability like that. And, I, and when I say open capability, those of you who are TVIs, don't get scared because we have, uh, I'm going to take the, the last few minutes here to show you some of our resources that we have because I'm sure it is a little frightening to say, okay, well, we've got a device that a kid can get on the Google Play Store and, <laughs> and download whatever they want. Um, we have some tools in place to show you the TVI how to, to protect against that or how the IT staff can, can protect against that. So I'm going to switch out of this. So we're on the HumanWare Braille Note Touch um, uh, page, and you can get to the Braille Note Touch support page very quickly by going to www.humanware.com/touch_support. Okay, humanware.com/touch_support. And the, this support page is a fantastic resource because you have links to all of the YouTube videos that we've done. So I'm going to go down to, um, I'll go down. So here's the Braille Note Touch. So you have the video tutorials, you have documentation, and then you have this place called User Recommended Apps. So many of you may say, you know, what, what do, uh, what apps work well on the Braille Note Touch and what apps uh, can I download and things like that. So Below this, recommended apps form is available right there. So if you are using it with your student and you guys find it, an app to be particularly useful or, or uh, functional, you can open up this form and you can actually fill out all the information about that app so that uh, other touch users or teachers get access to the apps that you're using really well. So it's a way for um, our Braille Note Touch users to really help each other out. Um, but I want to go up to the documentation. So if I go into the documentation section here. So the documentation section. So of course you have the user guide. But I want to highlight this. So the Braille Note Touch in the Math Classroom. Now this is a, a tool that we developed that really walks you through from start to finish the process of creating a document, entering in math content. We even put sample math content there that you can uh, you can write in both Nemeth or UEB. We have both a Nemeth and UEB version of this document. This is completely free for you to download and have as a sort of a cheat sheet right next to you when you're working with your student. It also walks you through the process of saving that document. It walks you through the process of emailing that document to a teacher. And then if you're one of those teachers that, uh, that, that wants to be able to print out a hard copy for the classroom teacher, one of the student, you want the student to print out a hard copy, the Braille Note Touch does have the capacity to download printing apps. And so what's really cool about the, the it being a, a Android tablet underneath is that if it's connected to the wireless network you can print to virtually any wireless printer that's in the school so for example HP a lot of schools buy HP wireless printers if there's some connected to the network or on a Wi-Fi connection um, you can download the HP print plugin app and that will basically search the wireless network for printers in the area. You can print to pretty much any printer that's connected to that network. 
So it really walks through the process of the creation, the math content creation, showing you how to access that symbol selector, to getting the assignment to the classroom teacher, you know, whether it's done through email or printing. So I definitely encourage you to all visit www.humanware.com slash touch underscore support. Go into the documentation section and download these, uh, these files. Uh, uh, we also have... Um, you know, frequently asked questions. There's a number of things on here that, that you can use. So, uh, so this is a great resource. I do encourage you to visit that. So um, I hope that you all found this useful. I know that we tried to cram a lot of information into an hour. Um, math is not something that we can always complete in an hour webinar. Uh, we, for those of you who will be attending uh, in the coming months, both ATIA and CSUN, I will be at both of those conferences preventing, do, or <laughs> preventing, presenting uh, some math presentations. And so I do encourage you, uh, be, uh, you know, check your email. We'll send out uh, notices of our humanware presentations in person in those, uh, at those conferences so you can sort of see this in action in per person and ask any questions that you need. But I once again want to thank you all for uh, joining us this afternoon. Um, my name is Greg Stilson. This is Louis-Philippe Massey, and uh, we look forward to talking to you soon in an upcoming webinar.